Hi, Tim Roberts, Application Engineer with Go Engineer. I'm going to hit about 10 tips in 5 minutes on Sketch Picture. Here we go. Tip number one is when you use Sketch Picture, it's going to look like this. And don't draw your geometry in this original sketch. Just leave that preserved for the Sketch Picture. Here's why. When we use Sketch Picture, times are going to come up where you want to hide the Sketch Picture and leave the geometry and if you do the example the guide curves in this example uh, we're in the sketch picture we wouldn't be able to do that tip number two is when you do this you're going to end up with quite a few sketch pictures at the top of the tree and some people don't like that um, a way to clean that up is if you select them and right mouse click you can add to a new folder just for organization it keeps your top of your tree a little more tidy Tip three has to do with scale. When we superimpose this picture on the sketch, it's probably going to come in at zero, zero on the left-hand corner, something like this. If we wanted to align our, our center to center distance, if, if it was important for us to have that be 30 inches, one suggestion would be to draw a, uh, draw a center line, and it could be horizontal or vertically, We'll stick a 30 inch dimension on that to use it kind of a, as a ruler. And this is in our sketch picture sketch. This is the one exception, by the way, to the geometry in the sketch picture because we're just using this for layout. In fact, you could delete this when you're done with it. But we'll drag our, our center to center distance over here and over on the, the right side, just kind of eyeball it. And now the, the sketch picture uh, has the proper scale ready to begin our sketch. And like I said, we're going to do that in a new sketch, not in the original sketch. So we'll insert a new sketch in the same plane as our sketch picture. Nine times out of ten, when you use sketch picture, you're probably going to be pushing and pulling spline points around your picture, similar to this. And the next tech tip has to do with the control of the spline. If you right mouse click on the spline, you can say display the control polygon. Now this gives you some additional control over your spline shape rather than just using the, the spline points, which you can still do. And so that's the control polygon. The next tech tip has to do with the actual point itself of the spline. If we take a, a point here, we have a couple of controls. The diamond is a radial drag handle. The arrow is a tangential drag handle. That influences the spline point on both sides. Finally, when we do a, um, enough edits to this that we've got it in an orientation we want, we probably want to lock it down. One way to do that is to do a fixed relation on the spline itself. Now, there's a disadvantage to this, and that's that you can't edit your grab handles. So, if we undo that, the next tip has to do with doing a fix just on the point itself. Now, the advantage to doing this is now we can actually drag that grab handle. Even though the point itself is, is fixed, we can still move the grab handle. Tip 9 involves this tangent drag handle. And at times you might want to see the curvature changing. So if you right mouse click on your spine and say show curvature combs, you can see a dynamic update as you drag the drag handles and that's sometimes helpful. And the final tip, tip number 10, is you can dimension to the tangent driving. A lot of people don't know this, but if we dimension the tangent driving, you can see the arrows are black. We can no longer drag the, uh, the handles to resize. My name is Tim Roberts. Thanks for listening to this video. Hope you enjoyed it.